Okay, first of all, I, just before we do this, this is uh, my one and only verbal warning I'm going to give is if you have a tender heart or a tender stomach, this video is probably not for you. Um, it's no big deal. I'm not like razzing you or anything. Um, I have been called tender-hearted before and I don't see a problem with it. So it's just, just a warning so that you don't get caught off guard. Um, I'm going to set up real quick here and this is just going to be a description and then I, it'll be a two-part video and the second part maybe we can sit and maybe I can generate some discussion. But I'm just talking about, um, give, give a brief description of some of the pertinent information here. We've had an above average snowfall this winter and about a month ago we had a snowpack of about three and a half feet. And three weeks ago we had, almost exactly to the day three weeks ago, we had a two day warm up period. One day where it was 34 degrees and the next day where it was 38. And um, the 38 degree day, uh, at the end of the 38 degree day we had a, a good sized rainstorm that came through and when that stopped then we dropped again below freezing. And what this did was it made a snowpack that is about a little less than two feet deep now, but it has close to a two inch layer of ice on top of it. And it's made it really easy walking for me. I, I've not worn my snowshoes in over three weeks because, or in three weeks since this happened because the two inch ice uh, thing of ice on top of the snow allows me to walk right on top of it. And it allows a lot of our other animals to walk right on top of it too. It allows our uh, coyotes, our wolves, uh, weasels. Most of our animals now have the ability to walk right on top of the snowpack. And it's made, for travel, it's made it a little easier. Now there is one animal that is different. Oh, here we got a hawk going by. He's waiting for me to leave, actually. Actually, she's waiting for me to leave. But anyway, um, one animal has a hard time walking on this kind of of uh, terrain and that is our white-tailed deer and the reason for this is that our white-tailed deer go anywhere from 100 pounds to 200, 250, you know some big ones may even top that. Uh, our deer around here average between 150 and 200 pounds um, and uh, our does I should say and that's mainly what we have here this time of year and uh, they if, if you know the anatomy of a deer, they're basically walking on their toenails. They're not walking on the pads of their foot. They're not walking tiptoe. They're walking on their toenails. And you've got a 150 pound, 200 pound animal walking on what's basically knives. I mean, very sharp. Their hooves are very sharp. Uh, and they break right through the two inches of ice on top and sink right down in and then the next step they take is a breakthrough and then the next step they take is another breakthrough and it's very hard for them to get around in this kind of um, with this kind of snow and it's also hard for them to get something to eat the hawks are very upset with me and I'll show you why in a moment uh, they they get um, the, the deer get very um, tired they have a hard time finding food because they've got to break down through all this ice to dig down to get to the acorns and the dried grass and everything like that. So it, it can cause a little bit of stress on them, um, but we have a lot of pine around here. You can see across the way and the, the pine is a starvation food, but it, the deer do eat it and uh, the deer have been eating on the pine. Well, that's the setup for the weather. Now let's just uh, give a little bit of of how I came across what I came across. Yesterday I, I, I'm outside more than I'm inside and yesterday I was coming through the area here and uh, I came across, um, I, I came up through here and you can see um, by the trail here I walk through here quite a bit and um, because I walk through here and kind of pack it down a lot of times the animals will follow through behind me because it's an easy walk. Well, I came up through this area here, which is on, it's, this is an oak um, cherry forest. And right over here we have a spruce forest. Um, 
and these are little baby spruces and this is right on the edge of an old farm field um, anyway and I came I came up through here yesterday and came across a bunch of this now this is this one it, it started a lot further back but you can see this is blood in the snow um, and we get more of it as we go along and in certain spots there's a lot of this blood and I came up to about this spot and realized the blood didn't go any further that way so I turned onto the deer trail and of course here's this very large pool of blood and when I came over and examined this the only tracks I could find around it, I've walked here so I've kind of destroyed some of the tracking, but the only tracks I could find around here were coyote and deer. And I took another step further and laying right next, just on the other side of this log here, is a deer and she's staring at me. She's not dead. And, but if, but from where I stood, her rear end was to me, and I could see that her rear end had been torn out, which is classic coyote. Coyote go in through the deer's rear end. And literally, what the coyotes had done, well, we'll come back to this here in just a second. I, this is where I became tenderhearted. I'm out here in the middle of the woods with no weapon whatsoever, and uh, I felt extremely bad for the deer. So I um, dropped home and it took me probably close to 45 minutes to get home and get back and came back with my 300 Savage and I shot her and put her out of her misery, which is an illegal act. Um, I'm not licensed to shoot a deer and it is out of season. I'm licensed to shoot a deer in season, but not it's not season, so it's considered to be an illegal act. And uh, but I, I couldn't I couldn't watch her suffer and I couldn't go home thinking I've just left her there because she was alive but her back end had been eaten out and obviously since she wasn't running away from me she couldn't run and when I shot her I found out that she is literally missing a leg from the knee on a back leg from the knee on down and this is uh, it you can tell by the coyote tracks but also by the fact that they went in through the back end through the rump that this is a coyote and it's not a kill because the coyote did not kill this deer I did but the coyote had begun begun to eat her while she was still alive and uh, coyote in this area go about I'm going to just show come up here a little closer this is this is one of the larger blood piles she probably laid here for a little while and then when the coyotes tried to you know get into her she lurched forward oops she lur lurched forward and then laid here again a little while and then Again, the coyotes more than likely could come in, and they, they're, they're not brave enough to come to the front end of her. So they came to the back end and ripped open the back. Her front end, she's a very healthy deer. Her front end, they, um, here's, here, and then she laid down on the other side of this log here. Um, the front end of her was dangerous. She had her front hooves, which are sharp knife-like knife -like things. Um, she they she could still do damage she's a hel she was a healthy deer and which ended up kind of being a detriment to her because she was suffering she was healthy enough to live through this attack and uh, was suffering and again I went home and shot her anyway but our coyotes in this area are 35 pounds tops they're not big animals and our deer as I said before go anywhere from 100 to 250 and this one she's I'm guessing around 170 and here she is. Um, again, if you have a problem, I guess this is this this is graphic because I shot her in the head, which is never a pleasant thing to see. Um, but anyway, uh, she so a 35 pound, even two 35 pound animals, which this was a pair of coyotes, could not bring down a healthy. And this was a very healthy deer, could not bring down a healthy uh, doe. 170 pound doe. doe. It's just not going to happen. They don't have the ability. 70 pounds of coyote cannot bring down a healthy 170 pound deer. She's got 100 pounds on them. She's got sharp hooves. Um, she may have even done damage to them with the initial kick. But because of the snow conditions and because she can't move very well through the snow, they did have the advantage and they did take it. And um, they basically ripped her leg off 
and then when she couldn't kick them anymore because her leg was removed they began to go through the back end as coyotes do and so I'm gonna stop here and start another video